Um, so anybody have any questions, we kind of throw that out to you as well. Anything for myself, Shaney, um, Jared, John is maybe coming back. Oh, there he is. Yeah. So. <laughs> there he is. So, um, where, no, John, where is the raise? The, oh, wait, they're throwing him in the chat room. I'm like watching the main thing, looking for something else. Yeah. Um, John is my idol. All right. True North, uh, you're sucking up. I don't know why. Um, oh, you know, so there's another contest coming up here in February. So <laughs> There we go. Um, what would you do if bar customers swear at you? This one's from Reggie. Um, so I am going to throw – let me throw that. Shinny's already shaking her head. Yes, yeah, so I think she's got um, – go for it take it away um, i mean you got to either you know deal with it in a professional way if you want to keep working there you know just like if you're at a private event and uh you know and a guest swears at you you just got to be professional about it and you know if you're at a bar and security's there have security handle it and you know just ask security to come over and deal with it or have them kicked out or just, you know, explain to yourself and say, excuse me, you know, please don't swear at me. You know, if you have a, uh, if you're asking for a song, you could, you know, talk to me in a, in an adult way, you know, if they're drunk, like I said, have security, deal with them, but you're always going to, you know, in bar atmospheres, you're always going to deal with idiots and drunks and stupid people. And it kind of comes with the territory when you're in those type of atmospheres and you're always going to have to deal with those type of people when you're in those atmospheres and it's never going to go away and it sucks. But if you want to continue in the bar type atmosphere and you're in an area where you're that close with people, it's not going to go away unless you're in a club setting where you are above people. It's, you know, you just, you got to deal with it or you tell management, I need security by me where people can't get to me. So you got to deal with it if you want to keep working there. If not, then you go full on, you know, just <laughs> crazy on them and you don't never work there again. So you just got to be professional about it if you want to keep working there. And it sucks. And, you know, you got to deal with it. Carry an extra light pole, um, speaker pole. <laughs> Take them out. No. Okay. Call <laughs> security. Can you describe the, you know, going – going crazy on them you know how she would actually reply if there was like there was no tomorrow and it was time for her to set this person straight yeah that, i mean that's what i'm saying if you don't want to work there anymore that's that's why i said if you don't want to work there anymore but if you if you know you're always going to work in a bar scenario that's you know you got to deal with that and that's what that's it comes with the territory working in a bar that you're on top of the people and that's what sucks in a bar atmosphere that you are that close with with you know people that coming up to you and putting phones in your face and just coming on top of you and touching stuff and touching you and things like that and it sucks and that's why you know you have to say to them look i need security here i need this i need that and if they can't help you out with that then maybe that's not the right spot for you if you can't and I'm, this is i'm not saying it's you reggie but i'm saying like if you can't handle the situation where you can't handle somebody swearing at you you can't handle somebody touching you you can't handle phones in your face and things like that then maybe that bar is not you know the type of place for you but i get it i mean it's 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 a hard bars are very hard and people who don't work in bars don't get it it's 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 not a great amount of money and it's it's hard hours and it's it's a hard atmosphere and if you don't have the patience to deal with that kind of stuff it's very hard on people and it sucks and you know you got to stay professional and you, you know and you got to kind of just smile and be like you know be like oh thank you for calling me those nice words you know my best friend calls me those too so what did you want to know you know you sometimes you got to kill them with kindness you know you know, how did you know that's my nickname? You know, sometimes you just, you just got to kind of, you kind of want, sometimes you just got to 180 on them too. And so, you know. What could they call you that you would say, oh, how did you know Well, that? no, but I'm saying like sometimes <laughs> you just 180 on them and, and Michael one ear, not the other. And sometimes they might walk away and be like, D what? Huh? And they might not ever do it again. So you might want to try that too and see if that works. I mean, Dave's like, what? I mean, but you never know. I mean, that might even work too. And just see, just totally 180 on them and you never know that might even work because if it's always going to happen i say just totally flip the script on them and be like oh thank you for for calling me that how'd you know that's my nickname what did you want boo boo oh okay yeah you know you never know so we'll see what happens i would do that and just totally flip the script on them for, for 2018 <laughs> well, 
I, I think I think you hit on something exactly. Like I mean, it's almost it's almost a bully mentality that that's going on there. And and like so let's just, let's that. assume for a second this is somebody swearing at you, not because they're just plastered drunk, which is a whole other issue on its own. But this is somebody who just kind of has some of those anger issues. Um, you know, I think. If you look, and, and this is kind of the teacher mode in me coming out, um, if you look, there's a lot of different like YouTube videos and stuff like that out there for how do you handle a bully? How do you how do you take their power away? And and exactly as Shaney was talking about, you flip the script on them, you know, or you, you know, they they start saying, "Yep, you're right. Thanks, thanks for letting me know." Like, and they're like, "Wait a minute, you're 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 agreeing with me." Yep, uh huh. And, and you almost like because they want you to like get defensive. They want you to kind of um, get angry with them because they're stupid. Um, but you got to figure out, you know, kind of a way to, to take that power away. Um, so, so Reggie, like you said, this past New Year's was the, was the worst one ever. Um, hopefully that's it. It stops. It was, you know, it's, it's what amateur night number three of the year. There's Halloween the night before Thanksgiving and then New Year's Eve. Um, so hopefully you don't have to worry about it for another 10 months. But in the meantime, I would I would look for some of those plan of actions just to see, especially if, you know, the bars that I've worked in, you can get security, but a lot of times they're like all the way on the other side of the room and the owner's not willing to hire another one to stand by you. They tell you to deal with it or get, find a new place. And if you're not, you don't want to find a new place, you can't find a new place, whatever you want to keep working there, then, you know, maybe look for ways to take their power away. And, and that's directed to anybody that, that wants yeah. to keep working in a place. Yeah. I mean, like I said, kill them with kindness. If you, you know, flip the script on them, just totally just, you know, like I said, just make them look like they don't even know what you're saying. Cause you're just flipping the script on whatever they're calling you names. Or, I mean, one time I had a place where, because like Dan said, security's on the other side of the room, you have a code word on the microphone. And it's not security, but you have a code word that you say with security, whether it be banana or, you know, just something that you say so they know whenever you say that word on the microphone, they know to come over. And that means like kind of like, you know, a code red that they need to come over there. But try, I mean, I say kill my kindness. Just totally flip that script on them and be like, how'd you know that's my nickname, boo boo? Okay, yeah, sure. You know, and just see if that happens. But yeah, and you know, give them a boop, you know, just, just see what happens. But like I said, you know, that, that bar seems bad. I mean, I, I get it. Oh, Reggie's dying on us right now, but that's okay. You know, see so, yeah, ya, safe word. There you go. Okay. Um, in the bar. I just tell people that I know Shaney and I show a picture of her kicking. And, you know. <laughs> uh, Chris, take it away. What you, what you got? Uh, I've got a quick question on copyright. If you have, you know, songs from iTunes, maybe older tunes that you can't seem to find anywhere on any of the, uh, you know, monthly uh, download sites. How does that work with, you know, a private wedding versus a public venue? Uh, can you give us some insight on what the copyright laws are? As far as playing well, it? Like what you can play at certain events versus, uh, you know, like a private wedding. My understanding is it's a private event. You can pretty much, if you download iTunes music, that's okay. Um, you know, but if it's a public event, you're going to have to go more with like promo only or, or one of those websites. Uh, well, I, I, th I think the, the, the thing that you want to be the most cautious about comes in play uh, or comes into an effect of the subscription services that you're, that you're using, whether it be promo only, direct cuts, um, any, any of the listing uh, of above and, and all of our wonderful sponsors. Um, but basically, the, the thing that you kind of want to keep in mind with them is you're paying for the service, not necessarily the the rights to play them. Um, if that, if you can think about the fine line that goes there, um, iTunes, Amazon, all the other ones that you're possibly downloading music from legally. Okay, keep in mind we're just saying all this stuff is legal. Um, if you read their terms of service, you're not supposed to use it for public playing. Now that's their terms of service. That's not a legal, we're going to throw you in jail. We're going to find you $500, you know, million dollars, whatever it happens to be. It's a completely flipped side of that. Um, the licensing that you're, you're going to be playing under that we as DJs in the US at least do not pay for um, is ASCAP, BMI, those type of licenses. Uh, they come into play from the venue side. In Pennsylvania, I luck out because if a venue has a liquor license, don't ask me why, but the liquor license gets tied into 
the ASCAP BMI gear either gets tied into the liquor license. So as long as I play where there's alcohol being served or can be served, um, I, I'm golden. Um, I don't have to worry about it. Private events, you know, that might be done in somebody's backyard, you know, it's, it goes into those, those kind of ideas, but it's, it's technically public performance, even though it's a private event. So it's, it's not your iTunes, it's not your Amazon, it's not your promo only, it's, it's not your service per se, as it is the flip side of that. Um, you know, here's, here's where I've always kind of gone with that. Be as legal as you can buying your music. And, and I don't see anybody coming after you for anything. I, you know, I, I mean, that, that's probably, a, that's probably being a little too generous. Somebody probably if they wanted to could. Um, but if you're purchasing your music, you're doing everything on the up and up, the ASCAP BMI people are not going to come after the DJ unless you're the one putting on the, putting on the venue, putting on the event from that side. Like if you decide, okay, I'm going to rent out this place and I'm going to throw this huge party, then you might have a different type of issue. But no, anyway, that's what Take yeah, that. the only time you're gonna you're going to ever. I mean, the biggest question with this, and it comes up all the time, is what am I gonna? What can I do to protect myself so I'm not gonna get busted? And the only company that's actively busting people right now is in the karaoke realm right now. Mm. They have been very very active, and they have a track <clears throat> record of finding people who have bootlegged uh, libraries of uh, karaoke CDGs specifically. The people from um, oh, Reggie, the knockout, uh, the big one. The big company, Sound Choice. Thank you. Sound Choice. Yeah, Sound Choice has probably been one of the most active, and he's the man who's in charge of Sound Choice is probably one of the most bitter people you will run into right now in our industry. Who does karaoke here? Show of hands. Reggie. Uh, Reggie. <laughs> Besides, I know Reggie does. Okay. Yeah, there's a few, but yeah, that that's that's really those. That's where I would be concerned because even transferring it without the proper licensing from CDG to your hard drive, even though I own it could still get you busted and they have prosecuted and they have fined people and they've won. So that's an area sound choice is very active up that back to the music side of it. Matt, are you using sound choice? I used to, but not anymore. No. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Okay. That's <laughs> back, back in the nineties. Yeah. I purchased okay. a lot of sound choice, but can't use it anymore. Okay. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people who have gotten rid of sound choice just for that. And it's sad because they had some great, great music and their, their discs were some of the better ones out there. But, and when you hear what they're doing and what they've done to the to the uh, area, instead of adapting and going forward and becoming the new whatever the new would be, they've decided to dig their heels in, and it's costing them. And again, that's why he's a very bitter man. I feel. Chris, where where are you located? I'm in uh, East Texas, east of Dallas. Okay, I didn't. I'd highly encourage you to reach out to a to a local attorney. Um, that's what I did when I started going the pure digital route for music. And the easiest way that at least here in Indiana, what they told me or what he told me was if I can prove ownership of the music that I'm playing, if I can prove ownership, then I'm, I'm okay. I mean, there's a lot of different avenues that you can go down. Dan hit on a few of them already. John was, was referencing them, but when he told me that I just started tracking everything and I really haven't had any fears about it whatsoever. I can prove where every single one of my songs came from through records and through, I use prime cuts personally. And then I also use Amazon to, to purchase everything. And I can tell you exactly when and where I purchased it. And, 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 and I feel totally fine about that. So um, that's, that's the, maybe the abbreviated version of all the answers is just prove that you own it and then you're golden. And that comes from the same opinion from the RAA, which is the prosecuting group that would be the ones that would get after you if they had an issue. And their idea is basically if you, if you can prove that you've owned it and you have the intent of is you're buying your music and such. The guy, when I talked to the guy from the RAA, R, 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 he, he's like, you're going to have some songs. We all have songs on our stuff that's just not – we didn't buy it because it was shared to us, given to us, whatever. He said, but if you, if you have your receipts for the music you're using and you can show that you bought it somewhere – we're not going to do anything. They're never going to come looking and searching. The only time you're ever going to have an issue is if somebody turns you in, which generally is a past employee who uh, uh, turns you in because you're you know, having multi-copies of, of a library out there or a competitor. They're never going to come and just randomly search. It just does not happen. And there hasn't been a proof of that. The other there has been, but there hasn't been proof. <clears throat> okay. I was under the assumption that if you purchased music from iTunes, for some reason, you couldn't play that in a public you're not supposed to. And if you go look at all the CDs, when we, we used to buy the actual CDs, they all say not for public performance. They're not, right. not to be making money off from. The 
R- the RIAA, they're the ones, again, who the enforcement arm of it basically said, as Jared said, if you buy it, and even though the music is a little different than the CDG, CDG, they aren't allowing you to change format. With music, you buy it, you can change the format, i.e. I can buy it on CD and then I can go and put it on my computer. They, as long as you've got proof that you purchased it in one way, shape, or form, they're going to be good with it. Yeah, that, one, that's really what uh, what it comes down to. So it's a really confusing area. And then you get people confused. Uh, there's a venue will say, oh, you, you the DJ, you have to pay the uh, ASCAP <clears throat> my fee. No, we've gone through this a hundred times. You don't have to pay it. That's the venue. Venue have to pay them. Unless, as Dan said, I'm renting his venue out. If it's a, you know, close to the public and it's DJ and TV night and I'm doing everything and making the money from it, yes. And then I have to pay those fees. But most of the time, we never, ever pay any of those fees. And, and again, exactly with what John was saying, though, that you said about the idea of iTunes and, and that type of thing. You know, if they wanted to, and they're not going to probably mess with this, they could suspend your account for doing something against it. But again, you know, I, I, I really find it hard to believe that an Amazon or an iTunes would have a problem with you buying their music. Yeah, I just wouldn't use them as your bulk of getting right. music. Right. You know, I would still use like a promo only, a prime cuts, like those type of places, record pools, you know, to get your, your bulk of your music. But I still use like an iTunes or Amazon for like one of those like hard songs that I have to do. Like I call them like the one hit wonder type songs for my clients that I have to just like find for like that one song for an event or something like that. I'll grab it off of that. So if that's what you're talking about, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it at all. And I think the biggest reason to use one of the record, the label or the suppliers, promo only, uh, prime cuts, uh, ERG, top hits USA, all four do a nice job. But the biggest reason I would recommend them, not only because they support the industry and iTunes and Apple and they don't is because they make clean edits that we can play at a variety of different places. They will go through and they will list it as explicit or clean. And that alone, when I can go and play a song that they said, well, the DJ was here for homecoming. Uh, his, he had the nasty version of this. And yours is, it's like, yeah, I get my music from music services. They bought their music from iTunes. You go to iTunes and it's like, oh yeah, I want to find a copy of this song. And it's like, oh, everything's ex- explicit. And there's not a version that's been edited. Music services makes pays for themselves. themselves yeah, very- agreed. Completely. So we, so we beat that one to death. Next one. <laughs> <laughs> um, Shani, while, while we're waiting for the next one, um, yes. what is the name of that folder that you tend to put those one hits that you're never going to play again into? Oh, I have a couple of them now. <laughs> oh, you do? <laughs> Her folder list has grown. <laughs> <laughs> My folder list has grown. Yeah, I have like the one hit wonders. I have the, the yeah, I have the miscellaneous ones. I have the, um, the, my ish. Um, folder of yeah I have like I have tons of like little subcategories in my Serato folders that I'm just yeah that I'm like I'll never play the the never play again folder you know the why did I have to buy this song (laughs) folder which I do have it that is what one of my crates is called why did I have to buy this folder $1.29 Dollar twenty nine folder, <laughs> you know, from Amazon. Like, why did I have to pay a dollar twenty nine for this folder? <laughs> usually, that's like I, I hate to say this, like nothing against like my ethnic clients, but usually that's like for like my Russian clients and my Polish clients and like those that I have to find those because they'll send me like the YouTube link, and I'm always like, I appreciate you sending me that YouTube link, but I, as I keep telling all my clients, I do not, you know, rip songs from YouTube. I'll try to find it off of one of our, you know, legal sites, but thank you for, for sending it. I can't read it. I don't know what it says. If you want to try to translate it for me and send it in English, I'll be more than happy to try to try to find it. And then of course, when I find it for all my, my Greek and, and Russian and all my clients and I find it, I'm like, Oh God, here I go. It's for that one song. You know, I want to dance with my husband. That's my, that's my, actually, that's my, my, um, that's my accent for all my my clients. It's the same accent. I, you guys know I was. It is a redneck accent. That's my, as well. Yeah, that's my yeah, accent that's, for everything. <laughs> redneck me. Asian. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the whole my accent. Spectrum, really. That's just the accent. So that's like the accent. I wasn't like you know like yeah, I'm not racist. That's the accent. <laughs> you say Shady do this accent. I'm like no, that was the accent. Do it now. That is my accent. <laughs> that's why I'm not an actor. Like that is my accent. So yeah, that's. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. uh, Dave, yeah, no, Zorbra, I actually have five versions of Zorbra for my Greek clients. Trust me, I have five versions. I do. I have incredible versions. I have five of them. I had, you know what? And the, and the best one I have that actually my Greek clients love and I'll never tell them is my techno version. <laughs> they love that one, which is hysterical because it's not even like the real, like ethnic version is like my techno one they love. But I have, yeah, I have five versions of, of Zorbra, which like, I'm like, okay, yeah. But that's not even in, that's actually in my Greek folder, yeah. Which like, I have the subcategories of like my Greek because I have then my line dancing Greek. And I have like dinner music Greek, you know, just like every other, like, it's like, I mean, yeah, it's crazy with like my folders. But yeah, Stan, I have like, why did I have to pay $1.29 for this song? You know, I will never play this song again, song, folder. Yeah, it's like those folders are crazy. Mm -hmm. so, I just mean, just because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, let's let's switch over to you. Uh, you have a, your hand up. What's up? Uh, not really a question. Just comment. Uh, comment on what the, we're talking about here for the music and stuff. With multicultural music, it's real interesting because same thing. Shaney last night uh, for New Year's Eve. Actually, I was at a family entertainment center, and then for the first time in this place, I've worked there for twenty five years. They asked me for Bollywood music. Oh yeah. And this was at a family entertainment center, and I was like, okay, that's it's different. It's interesting. I had some stuff, but. When they came up and asked me, I'm like, what are you looking for? And of course they say Bollywood. And you're like, well, what are you looking for? And same thing. You ask them what song, what artist they have, they have no clue. No. Cause they just, they just know Bollywood. Yeah. yeah. I just want and Bollywood. Like, that's a huge category. Yeah. That's like, like when people say, I want Latino music. Can you yeah. just play Latin song? And you're like, you're like, yeah, I can. And then you, you play, play a song and it's not the one they want. <laughs> and you're like, well, can you like yep. give me a clue? Like what kind of Latino you want? Yep. Like, So you, you try to narrow it down like that. And yeah. you, you, you talk to your client to see things. But when it goes back to the idea of music again and copywriting and legal issues and stuff, if someone comes up to me at a wedding and says, it's on YouTube here, play it. Yeah. It, it, I, you're not going to get me to play that at a public place. Right. <laughs> you know, especially if they didn't tell you in advance before the event or what's happening or where the music's coming from. And same thing. When people come up to you at a bar or a restaurant, they say, here, play this song. I just say, sorry, I can't plug your system. Your, right. that's, your, your phone that's the system. best way to just handle it is just say, I, I don't have that. You know, I, 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 I can't plug your, your phone, you know, your right. phone and I apologize. But if there's something, you know, is there something you want to request and, you know, I can play, you know, and then you just kind of, but you try to like flip it a little bit so they don't walk away like all pissed off and right. call your name like Reggie's yep. people do. Just and, turn around and say, uh, can you, you know, suggest another song or another? Right. Would, you like, you like? would you like to request something, you know, that, right. you know, you know, Despacito or, you know, something that you like to No, play. not that song, not that song. <laughs> <laughs> then you the most down they, song they the <laughs> yeah, yeah switch it up a little bit <laughs> but when it comes to legal playing music at an event or venue definitely go ahead with the music sources music series subscription series rely on those first um if you if you're a new dj to start out doesn't look like most of us are here but if you're new starting out go for the greatest hits go for, go for the collections go for the greatest hits collection of an of a band or an album or those things or you know Back in the day, we had the Mobile Top 200. We know what happened with that. And then we had another series, the Platinum series that came out that people were jumping all over. Um, compilation albums are okay, but do not use them as a main source for your music. You go with the series and subscription series first, definitely. So, thanks, guys. That was all. <laughs> so, so. I, love the, I love those CD series when those come out. When yeah. They were so awesome. Those are the best. And the you biggest check, one now is now, of course, the now series for music. Yeah. yeah if you're trying to, if, especially if you're trying to fill in some older stuff, you know, some yep. of the earlier versions of that. And if you check, um, I know we talked about not necessarily using Amazon for all of our stuff, but you know, they are what they are. Um, Every once in a while, while it's okay. Every once in a while. Well, well especially when, when you're now. trying to fill in, you're trying to fill in. Unfortunately, you know, that's one of the downsides to a lot of these record pools is, um, the way they have their licensing through the companies and all that it's, it's kind of leaps and bounds for them actually to go ahead and put together an older set 
unless they're like selling off old discs or something like that, it, it's kind of hard for them to, to roll it out quite the same way. Um, so sometimes, you know, going on Amazon for those and looking you get 499 albums, you know, like it's, it's only digital. That's fine. Um, but you know, if you, if you watch their, their collection and they even have um, stuff you may never heard of that you could fill it for cocktail and dinner hour and covers and, and all these other kind of stuff. A lot, of, I know a lot of my friends of mine will they'll just watch those and listen every so often just to see if something sparks. And again, you, you can jump on some really great deals for, you know, five bucks. And especially if you're a new JJ or you're just trying to fill in a category that you didn't realize you had a hole in, it's, it makes an awesome, awesome uh, investment there. Joe just said the promo only um, best videos are good. Promo only does a really good job. Even like, like when Nick comes out with his like crazy Nick's picks. Like, I love looking like when he does that. <laughs> yes. I mean, I don't want Nick's head to be all crazy because I'm actually giving him a compliment. I don't know if he's going to see this. <laughs> I don't want him to actually know I'm giving him a compliment right now. But yeah, when he does his Nick's picks, sometimes I'm like, oh, God, I wouldn't even think about like that song from back in the day. So sometimes when he does his Nick's picks, like that, those are those are pretty good, too. He does that but yeah some of their best of videos they they have some really good ones too that they they come out with those and actually if you subscribe and you get like their dance mix videos mm -hmm. they they have some really good throwback stuff too on, yeah. on the bottoms of those as well yeah and they do promo only does a really good job and that's the difference between music video and audio licensing is music video they can go back and do the back library yeah so, so they'll have people who will buy the videos and then just rip the uh, audio off the videos and never use the videos but they want that uh, audio for the back library but that's a different license. and if you're seeing any of the music uh, the music these websites that are offering music that is unremixed that's over three years old they're not a legit music source because the statutes are they can only go back three years which means a little library. tidbit of information there yeah. there you go that's your like, golden nugget from John right there. <laughs> Speaking of music, I don't see any hands raised, but I, I figured, hey, we're talking about music. So <clears throat> those that use Amazon, and if you guys have talked about this before, just tell me to shut up. Shut up. Uh, but shut up. <laughs> tell us more about Amazon. No, no, no. <laughs> <sighs> Jared, if you can't start taking it, we're gonna have a long. Oh, no. no, 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 no! I'm good. No, I'm, I'm good. I was getting ready to jump right into Shaney's uh, Australian Asian. Jared gets a gold reaction. star from you right there. Yeah. All right. All right, Jared, you're gonna, you know that, from right that, uh, that rich type of accent that covers out. Oh, I am Asian. Of course, I am Asian. Um, Shaney, no. go ahead and boop him. So, no, because that was actually good. I actually laughed at that. So that was really good. Oh, good. Okay, good. Uh, that was funny because he started with Australian. I was like, oh, was it Australian too? Okay, good. With yeah. my Vegemite? Okay, that was good. Covers them all, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so did you, I'm assuming those that purchase music from Amazon know about the auto rip functionality? Maybe, yes. Why no? don't you tell us about auto rip? Because I, I actually maybe maybe I shall. I shall. I shan't do that now. Thank so, you. The, uh, the auto rip function, when you, when you purchase music from Amazon, you have the option of either purchasing the CD or you can buy it digitally. Well, every time that you go check out and you're, you've got your music, your, 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 your digital files ready to be purchased, I would like to challenge you to, before you hit purchase, okay. go back and look to see if those, especially if you have five or six tracks on the same album, go back and see if the, if the CD version is available. Because I think it's like 92% of all Amazon music that is in CD format, you can purchase digitally. So what they've done is they say, well, if you purchase the CD, we'll give you the digital copy for free. We'll just give you the digital copy. And, and normally the price for the CD is about the same price as the digital, if not sometimes a little bit cheaper. So what I'll do is if I'm purchasing three or four songs from the same album, I'll jump over real quick and I'll look to see if the, the actual copy compact disc that's that's what we used to call it back in the day um but that disc if it's the same price or cheaper i will just purchase it from there and then they'll two-day ship it to my house and then i've got my digital files already now the reason why i say this is twofold one if you just like having a hard copy of all of your music go for it but the second part is i really really enjoy <laughs> thanks davester um i really 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 enjoy 
collecting those CDs and then giving them away at public events because I'm not going to do anything with them. So I have like just collections of Justin Bieber that I swear I will never purchase, but I had to, for some bizarre reason, stacked up, I can go out and then I've got these CDs that I technically didn't really pay for, but I did. And I just use those as giveaway things. Sure. So I've when you got- give them out at a public event, does somebody go, what's this? <laughs> who's Justin Bieber? <laughs> no, not well? who's Justin Bieber. No, 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 no. Not who's Justin Bieber. When you okay. do- the CD out is what I'm saying. Oh. Does somebody literally look at this and go, I don't, what, what is this? And what do I do with this? And where do I, I don't know what I do. My with computer it. doesn't have even a place right. to play it anymore. That's what I'm saying. No, I'm yeah. literally like asking because I know like, you know, like my students nowadays, if I were to like give them a CD, they don't even know what that is. Like, I, and I'm being like, totally like honest with you. They have yeah. like no clue what that is. Well, well think, that's why I have it. those two, but I'm saying like, I'm old school, but I'm saying like my students. Yeah. yeah. I, I As special at it. DJs, oh, go ahead, when man. was the last time we bought a CD player? When that's was the last why, time that's why I'm just asking, I'm just totally personally just asking you, like, have you ever had that situation where you go to give it to somebody and somebody's like, what is this? Like, You know, I, I haven't. Uh, and the main reason is because they're getting something for free. Okay. And so they yeah, don't okay. normally they don't normally question it. If yeah, maybe if I'm, I'm just I'm in a spoiled area, so I have okay. Well, so you're yeah, Chicago, I'm, right? Yeah. yeah. See, I'm in spoiled. Yeah, areas, us podunks so I, down yeah. here in Indiana. See, I would like, love oh, that. Free, give it to me. Yeah. Yeah. See, okay. when I'm in like Milwaukee area, they they ask me like when I give them like free prizes, they're like, "How much is this?" I'm like, "Oh my god, I love you." No, this is free. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like I, that's why I love doing like events like out there, and I'm like, yeah. But yeah, no, no, I just wondered if like someone's like, what is this? <laughs> I could probably twist it into into some sort of like a history lesson for him and, <laughs> right. well, and make it educational for him. Back it's in like the day. Mr. Wizard, and you're the <laughs> worst DJ ever. <laughs> back in the day. This guy's lecturing to us. What is going on? <laughs> I don't want to learn. I just want to dance. Well, you're not <laughs> right. doing that very well. So you're going to learn instead. No, it's, no that's um, a, I mean, that's a good idea that, you know, that you do that. That's awesome. Well, and, and it doesn't cost any more money out of your yeah, pocket. It really doesn't. Great. And you start collecting, I think I got like, uh, like all four Ed Sheeran CDs for under 40 bucks. Oh, wow. But I had to purchase a lot of his, he, sure. I had a bride that really loved Ed Sheeran and I was like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. So I used one of the CDs. I, what I did was I took the CD, uh, it, it was, what was it? I think it was multiply or divide one of his newer ones and i had all of the other wedding professionals sign it and then i gave it to the bride as as a gift as cool. just hey thank you know nice. it didn't really cost us anything just took some time to walk around and let them all write a little message and say hey listen to this and enjoy it and you know congratulations and blah 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 but i, I i'm noticing that 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 people like uniqueness more than staples. So if they're used to getting something, then they're going to feel like they deserve to have that. Whereas in, if I present them with something that is a little bit more left field, that's more unique, yeah. it's, that's going to stand out significantly more that than awesome. uh, yeah. $200 gift card or whatnot. Which by the way, if anybody wants to send me a $200 gift card, oh. I am not going to say no to that. You can I'll send you a fidget it. spinner. How's that? <laughs> No, I do not want the, the fidget I spinner. Said, no, no fidget spinner, no. No, okay. <laughs> oh, my land. No, that's a good idea. That is. I mean, that's, that's old school. It's a good idea. I love it. I think it was kind of, really kind of cool where you said about having them sign. I, to me, I, I, I don't know. I, I think it's a little weird in some aspects of your signing and they're going to want that part. If you got Ed Sheeran's signature on it, that would <laughs> right, be a little different. Right. I, was, uh, I was like, wait, is he signing Ed Sheeran's signature? I was I, like, that's wait. what I should have done. That's we should have had everybody like, sign it as Ed Sheeran. I'm not, yeah. not going to lie. Yeah. You probably could find that online. <laughs> Dave, I'm not going to lie. I get it printed to the CD. That would be awesome. I thought he was signing Ed Sheeran's signature. I was like, I'm not going to sue anything, but is he signing Ed Sheeran's signature? <laughs> I'm, I'm not a good looking guy. So, I mean, we kind of match up. So, it's just a matter of signing it and then we're good I got a little confused with you didn't say it was the Ed Sheeran you just found Joe Schmo down at the <laughs> Kmart to fill it out for you Edward Sheeran oh it's a very different Ed Sheeran yes yes he works at he works Ed at W Sheeran Ed yeah. W Sheeran <laughs> he's from Kankakee Illinois you guys don't know him he's from Kankakee <laughs> good guy good guy makes yeah. tremendous ribs here you go he, he wanted to sign the CD for you <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. 
We're having too much fun on our show. People are missing out of our show. I know. <laughs> we can hold up to 200 people. We got we to gotta recruit some more people right now. Let's go. <laughs> They're missing out. It's Look okay. up all the Ed Sheerans in the country <laughs> right now. We'll bite them in the and song. start sending invites out. <laughs> Let's make it happen. <laughs> Jared, Sharon. <laughs> Jared. There we Jared, go. Jared. 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 It Jared. works. It works. <laughs> My friends call me. Yeah. That's funny. That's funny. I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, so, so I'm going to take a, take one of the ideas that was kind of tossed out there and I'm going to share it with all of you. And, and if you want to use it for yourself, go ahead and do it. Um, one of the things that I've heard a couple of different DJs in the past doing is taking, you know, if you're going to do a CD giveaway, very similar to what um, Jared was mentioning, I've seen some people do that as part of like, if it's a wedding, um, buying the CD that the first dance was on and then putting it into a nice little plaque with a photo that you may have taken and, you know, putting it together again, you know, it kind of depends on if you, if you want them, it's not a CD that they would probably ever take out and put in the player because obviously you put it into a nice plaque for them. Um, but it kind of commemorates the first dance with a picture of the album of them doing it. Um, again, just something different. That's nice. Um, yeah. It, it it's, for a while there, I thought it was corny when I was hearing people doing it. And I think it was mainly because at the time, CDs were everywhere. Now that they've kind of become more of a nostalgia type of thing, for lack of better terms, I guess, um, it would be another way uh, to kind of just, oh, that's, that's different. Who gave that to you? Oh, that was your DJ? Oh, okay. And, you know, maybe get together with a photographer and you guys do it as a joint gift because, you know, your photography, photography skills suck. But, you know. My iPhone 4 just does not take good pictures. iPhone 4? You have the iPhone 4? I'm surprised. Oh, my goodness. Don't do that to me, man. <sighs> Sorry. Did, did not mean to give you the, uh, the heart attack. Uh, Look, he could have said boy. Blackberry. So at least he said oh, iPhone 4. The truth is he, feels, he still has that Nokia in the back. That's okay. If you, you still do. have the Nokia, what is it, the 5810 or whatever, you're yeah. good. If you don't, what, would it be a picture of the CD of the couple? Dave said, asked. Uh, would it be a picture? You of, could. I mean, you, you could definitely, couple? you could definitely do it that way. My, my thought was you actually buy the physical CD, the normal album or single single would be the better way to go about it. If you could even get to just, oh, just that um, and put that in the plaque and then put the picture um, you know, I don't know if the picture's in the background, the CD's kind of in the lower corner. I mean, you think about, you know, I would get somebody who has good um, design skills to think through what's going to be the most um, appealing to the couple. Uh, but that that's kind of where I thought about it. I mean, if you put it on the actual CD, that's kind of cool too. Uh, you wouldn't need as big of a plaque if you're doing it that way. Um, but my thought was if you're using the photographer's picture, uh, then that would probably be big. And then the CD that you bought would be the normal quote unquote CD or single. Cool. Yeah. I wonder That's how cool. much it would cost to like frame it up like a, uh, like what they did for, oh, what are they? Uh, platinum hits and whatnot and gold hits when they would have it like actually framed up. Like have a frame. In there, yeah, yeah. And then the CD in there and then the picture in there. I wonder if that would be. That'd be cool. My guess is if you if you decided to run with it and do it, it would be you know it would be no more expensive than some of the other gifts that I've seen. Oh, like a shadow box, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You know, and and kind of to to use an Allen Berg line, cheaper than it costs you not to do it. Oh, oh somebody listens to the seminars. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> excuse me for those of you that are not familiar with Alan Berg just listen to some of his stuff and he talks about when is it time to update your marketing when it's costing you more not to Ooh, two points for Dan with the Alan Berg quotes he's going for the hat trick he's got 24 minutes I think before he's got he to do another out. Alan Berg quote our show's already longer than it was last else. week that's true <laughs> that's true we've already made up what happened? was it crash and burn last week what was it what happened um, so I missed a, a setting where I was supposed to sign in under, 
um, or be a part of the DJ and TV um, conglomerate. So what ended up happening was I had the free version, which limited our recording of our, well, actually not just a recording, the meeting itself could not be any longer than 40 minutes. Okay. And they held us to it because it just went out on us right in the middle of MJ talking. Yeah. Oh, and, and I wasn't there to do my dance moves. Like yeah, I usually do with MJ. You would have extended the time for that. Yeah. <laughs> While I'm looking, I'm digging in the closet. I pulled out a, a ghost of Christmas past, actually bridal show season past. You guys can see that. This was a, a CD back when CDs were hot and we were using them for marketing at bridal shows. This is, uh, this would have been in the, oh boy, late nineties when we were starting to transition. Once, once it became possible for me to check and see where brides, what search terms they were using to find me because it was Soundforce Disc Jockey was our, our DJ company. And I was having people who were finding me under, they were looking for DJ John Young. Hence, then I went and got the DJ John Young uh, website and such because that's what they were finding me. But there was a company that at the time, this is actually a pressed burned CD. And what I did is I did the little voiceover and did a four track audio disc and, and had a spool of these. I think I had 500 of these produced and handed these out at a bridal show. Again, back when people would actually use their CD players in their cars. That was probably one of our best promotions we ever did actually. Because uh, people actually listened to those because it was, you know, tips for a successful wedding day and they could throw it in their car and listen to it on the way home. Those days are kind of over. You could do yeah, it on your flash drive. Yeah. yeah. yeah we saw how many of the, we saw how many of the uh, wrist ones handed out at, at Atlantic City. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. When we were like, taking a picture, that guy came over to us. Yeah. And gave, <laughs> gave us one. We were taking our picture. Yeah. I walked out with about three of them that I just erased everything that was on it and used it for something else. There you go. <laughs> oh, I think I've got a stack. I know he doesn't have a Bose one because he didn't come, you know. Yeah, he didn't... No, no. I, I have Husqvarna. I've got Makita, DeWalt, basically, because the, the companies, when you go to the power tool shows, everybody's got a thumb drive. So we, I think when we came out of the GIE show this year, we had like 25 different thumb drives. By the way, I will say this. If, if you are doing any type of thing where you're giving to the bride um, or the couple or, or the event people, um, when I do photo booth at the end of the night, I'm giving them a flash drive yep. um, of all the pictures. I found a, a company that will put my logo on that flash drive. On the flip side is my website. If nice. you're giving generic ones, stop. Stop. <laughs> stop giving generic ones. Yeah. You can you – can, buy a, a 200 pack of these for probably pennies more than what you're buying them at Walmart and, and fitting everything that you need on there with your logo. So, um, you know, if, like I said, if you're doing generic stop, get your logo on there because when everything they go to pop it in branding, everything, pens, exactly. everything. I mean, like if you have an office, I mean, I'm not saying like, you know, like if you have everything, like if you have an office and they come in your office and they ask you for a pen, like don't be giving them like a big pen. They should, you know, like they should, you should have like your company logo. If you have an office that way, if they're walking out with it, it, it should have your information on it. Like any, anything that, you know, anything with branding, like you said, like a thumb drive, anything that you're, you're handing them. I don't care what it is. I mean, so, something it's like, for me, it's all, as you guys know, for me, it's all about branding. It's all about everything. I mean, anyone that's seen me in Atlantic city or, or Vegas, if you walked around anywhere, you'd see my stickers all over the place. I mean, I, I, it's just, it's all about branding for me. So, you know, if that's, if you don't, if you don't do one thing for 2018, try to think about something with branding for, for something for your company, whether you're, you're a single op, if you don't have an office, it doesn't matter. Just think about something that you can do for, for something for yourself, for branding and see if like you book just one extra event because of that. And trust me, it'll be worth it. Spaceballs just, had it right, man. Spaceballs was all about branding. He said Spaceballs. Yeah. You remember that scene with Yogurt and he was going through all the Spaceballs merchandise? If, merchandise. if you don't, if Dan, if you don't have Dan Carpenter toilet paper in the next three months, I'm going to be certifiably disappointed in you. Very disappointed, yes. Well, no, because I don't think of my branding where I'm going to wipe my butt with it. 
Ah, but if you look at it from the other point of view where you're taking care of someone else's needs, then every time they wipe, they're like, hey, you know what? That Dan guy, he could take care of me. I'm doing hand towels. I'm going to do hand towels. Okay, you could do that too. That's fine. Diarrhea could be multiple times a day. You're taking care. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. I'm just Boy, saying. I have no clue what I'm feeling right now. <laughs> it's that's the feeling of comfort. What, what was our warmth. topic again? <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Yeah, well, it was the questions you were afraid to I know, ask. That's, what I, that's guys... why I was like, oh, okay, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. yeah. There. Sorry about the delay, but we got there. <laughs> 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 oh my uh are you going to just out that company that does the flash drives um yeah give me a minute you guys talk i'll go find out what it is because i have it in a box and i don't remember because it's been a year since i had to buy them so you guys keep talking i'll find it i mean let me put it this way if you guys i mean our sister company is a branding company but i'm gonna be honest we're not cheap so if you guys are looking for cheap, I wouldn't tell you to come to us. But if you guys are looking for incredible quality, our sister company does all types of branding for, for corporate. So anything you guys are looking for branding, you could, you could come to my sister company, t-shirts, mugs, any, any type of thing. But like I said, we are, my sister company definitely is not cheap for anything. So if you're looking for cheap, don't come to us. We can't help you. But if you're looking for, for incredible quality and incredible marketing stuff and, and somebody that can do an incredible, you know, a design for you guys, then, then our sister company is the way to go. But if not, I'm sure Dan can help you guys out with that. I'm sorry. Was I, I caught it. I caught the last end of that. You no, said- I was just saying like I, my sister company is, a, is our branding company and we do oh everything but we're not a cheap company whatsoever because we do big corporation type stuff so i can't help people that want like a very cheap like branding type type thing at all like we don't do give give discounts and things like that so if they're looking for something for cheap our sister company is not the way to go but if they're looking like for something for very high quality in t-shirts and in towels and anything and mugs and thumb drives and this and that, we can totally help them out. But if they're just looking for, look, I need 500 at like 10 cents a pop or something, we're not, we're not the ones to do it. But I'm like, if you know, Dan can help you out, please, please give them the name of whatever they can do. Well, the, th- the thing that I would, I would mention first off before we get into this, um, you know, m- my advice to you first off is if you don't have a logo or if you've designed your own logo, um, I would find a, a custom person to be able to do that for you. Um, I, I, for the longest time, just tried to design everything for myself. And I realized once I had somebody else to do it, you can how use my name. Crappy <laughs> I am at anything like that and how much I thought I was good at it before I had somebody do it. Um, but you definitely want somebody who's going to give, you know, you're going to work well with and, and is going to take your, take your advice with it. Um, but the company, the company, I, and I searched a bunch of places online, um, Googled it, you know, just where can I get, you know, USBs, you know, printed on USBs and stuff like that. And there was a couple I just didn't really feel all that great about. I found one that had decent reviews and it was customusb.com. Um, oh, nice. so that was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a cool name. Um, they had a bunch of different styles. Like I could get the creative ones. Um, I could get the little ones that are like credit cards that you could have a little, you know, the little piece like a, um, Mike Walter did with his uh, about a year or two ago when he put out one of his uh, seminars on like that credit card style, um, which is, you know, you can be very unique with all those kind of things. So, um, but I just went with this and I'm probably upside down. Aren't I? Yeah. yeah you are. Um, so there we go. Like just did my logo nice and nice and easy. Flip it on the backside. There's my web address. And um, I, I don't remember exactly what I paid, but these are like four gig flash drives. So I didn't want the 32 gig. I didn't want the 16 gig, but I also didn't want the 500 megabyte gig or 500 megabyte one. Uh, I wanted something that was going to hold the photo booth <laughs> pictures on it. Um, so definitely, definitely something that I would recommend. Um, again, customusb.com is what I found. And if you need information on that, drop me on Facebook. I can, I'm sure I have the link of the uh, person I worked with and, and can go a little bit farther. I'm sure it's in my email somewhere. So uh, can't drop Shinny's need. Discount. Yeah, so you can drop my name for my sister company. They will give you a discount if you drop my name for sure. 
So, and if you need them to help with a, like a logo or something, you can get a discount with that. Or if you need a discount with bulk, they will help you. Yes. <laughs> the owner will help you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm also. Um, are there a number of limits? Um, it it depends <laughs> on what you want. So it depends on because like if there's t-shirts, she'll 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 get right on the phone. She doesn't even have to look stuff up. Like if it's um, pens, she'll be like, oh, you have to order. What kind of pen do you want? Do you want this, 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 or this? The limit is this on this pen. The limit is this on this pen. If you want the, the blue, blah, blah, blah. I mean, she'll like literally go through like 32 different things on the pens. Like, okay, well, how much do you want to spend? Okay, well, that'd be this, this, this. So she'll go through everything with that or through email or whatever. So whatever you guys want, like I said, she does stuff for Xerox, for for all different corporations. And like I said, she does it for parties too. So like people order t-shirts for, for events and things like that. So it's not just corporations. She does it for like our mitzvah parties and for normal clients and people that are just like, hey, we're having a family reunion and we want 30 t-shirts and this is what we want on it. And we want it in pink and this and that. So, um, and they ship like all over the place too. So um, it's no problem. And she like last year, it was like, she did like so many fidget spinners. I, it was like coming in and out of the office. I didn't even want to see another fidget spinner spinner. Like they were, and they were like messing with me and putting it on my desk. Like every fidget spinner that I had, I was like, can you not put these on my desk anymore, please? Well, we just want to show you the logo. No, you want to show me the fidget spinner. Stop. Like, I was like, I don't want to see any more fidget spinners. Like, yeah, people were giving away at their corporations. I was like, oh my God. But yeah, so if you guys are interested just to get pricing or anything, yes, you could definitely drop my name to try to get some discounts if you're interested, so. My favorite, I'm going to, you, you mentioned fidget spinner. My favorite moment from Atlantic City had to have been, um, there, you know, there's a couple of companies that were giving out the fidget spinners. MJ was just like, you know, I, I've never touched one of these. I have no desire to ever touch one of these. And I was just like, hey, this is kind of cool. Like, you know, one lights up, you know, and I, I've been dealing with them in my classroom. So I was just like, I really hated them. Um, but I was like, hey, this is kind of cool or whatever. He's like, oh, let me see that. Next thing I know, he's like, I, I got to go get some. I, oh, I got to go, go get like, a couple of them. To them. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's like all the time. And he's spinning them on his, on the, I thought his you were controller say your favorite now. One was me not being able to turn off the American DJ fidget spinner in my freaking room. And I couldn't sleep that night. Yeah, yeah. You're like, mm -hmm, okay. Dave's still laughing at me about that. I didn't know how to turn that one off. And, he, and Ronaldo was like, oh, you just press it and all three things. Yeah, I didn't know how to turn it off. Yeah, I didn't know how to turn it off. That's why you put your hat over top of it and then you don't I see it. I should have put the freaking, I should have put the hat on top of it. I should have, no, I already gave you the Sprite hat. I think I already saw you. That's yeah, true. The that's hat. true. You did better. So I couldn't, yeah. So that whole night, it was just flashing on my desk the whole night. A room put full it in my, clothing put it, and different things and towels and she couldn't find anything but <laughs> I know, put, put I it in the bathroom, bathroom like what shut the I door why did i throw it in the freaking bathtub or something for my suitcase oh my god i was just tired i guess poop <laughs> towel yes yes why, there did you guys say that to me? why did anyone yeah. say that to me we didn't want to make you feel bad then now we just don't care. Yeah, now you guys just don't care. Dave's laughing at me still. Like, but it's okay. It's all right, guys. It's okay. <laughs> all right. Oh my. Uh, Ian uh, mentioned. Yes. Mentioned a question up here on how do you get clients to better understand your value, and I want uh, just to uh, share a couple of thoughts on this. And then I've got to skate, and you guys can wrap things up here. But I'm going to take this back to the video that Ron and Ruth and I did actually a few weeks ago. That's why I'm surprised they didn't jump on this this one a little harder is Ron, Ron was talking about buying uh, windows for his house, but windows and a door. And he was talking about three different companies that he was, he, he and his wife had interviewed and they ultimately went with the most expensive of the three. And it wasn't so much of the, <coughs> the, the, how they showed the value and such. He really wasn't as much of that as it was mm -hmm. and how he developed the trust, that relationship where he became the person who had the answers to answer the questions and, and solve the problems in which Ron and his wife had. At first, they didn't know what they wanted. They didn't know what kind of situation. It's very similar to a, what a wedding couple is when they're planning a wedding for the first time. And he was able to walk them through and talk and make some suggestions and ideas and ask the questions to get that, that communication going and building that trust. And that trust ultimately leads to, wow, once I trust you, I can understand your value because you are more of an expert to me. And I think that, that sometimes we overlook those areas that just that communication 
and building that, that trust before we start to really throw money around. And I know some people want to talk money right away, but it's, uh, it's, it's that trust that has to come first before we can show value. I can go and say, yes, I've got the biggest speakers and I've got the biggest lights and nobody around has anything even close to that. But if I don't have a level of trust, they're not going to, to give my value any precedence. Whereas I can see it on, on a daily basis, Lori and with her local newspaper, she's able to go and do things that other newspapers can't do because they trust her at such a level that they've abandoned some of the other newspapers to continue to do business with her. And it's just that, you know, that simple five letter word of trust. So I, I think that uh, ultimately becomes as how does a person build that trust in that relationship. And I think that's the area in which we need to focus on more because we all have, we all have speakers, we all have lights. We just have to build that relationship. And once we have it, then we're good to go. And then we can solve questions and solve or solve problems. We can, Oh, you, you need, you guys want to do this. This is, that's wonderful. And now you can do the Brian red approach and say, well, Hey, I can, we can do this. Here's this option to do it. Here's this option to do it. And here's this option, whatever it is. And you can show value, but, but you've established your trust that you're not there to basically sell them a line of goods. I agree on, on the whole trust issue. Um, and I try to, first of all, when I talk to them, I try to get a meeting in person. Um, so I can make the eye contact and I could have them feel more of the feelings in person and the emotional contact than do it over the phone, which if it has to be done over the phone, I don't want them to feel rushed in the meeting, whether it's me being rushed or them being rushed. So I always make sure that when we are talking, they have enough time to talk to me as well. And it's not, you know, when they're picking up their kids and they got screaming kids in the background or, you know, things like that, or they're on the way to go shopping or, you know, things like that. So I always, I always try to set up the time. And just like you said, most clients really don't care too much about the whole DJ equipment issue. Like they, most, some of them do. Some of them like want to know about the bells and the whistles and, and, the, and the speakers and the amps and things like that. Most of them don't care about that at first. So I don't like to talk about the equipment aspect of it. And I like to give them more background about me and about what I can do for them personally. And I like to give them that, that personal aspect of it and try to, as you say, not only just earn their trust, but have them have that comfort level with me. And I think getting the comfort level and getting their trust with both is what's key with them. So they do have that, just the comfort first. And once they kind of have that, you kind of then can wheel them in and get everything else with the aspect. But I still feel like you can't rush it. And you just really, if you have to have a three hour conversation, you have to have a three hour conversation. And to me, I think it's worth it to be able to have that three hour conversation to book in. If you can't, if you don't want to put the time into it, then maybe it's not worth it for you. For me, I don't mind putting a three hour conversation to somebody if I'm going to book a, for me, a five grand event. Mm -hmm. I don't mind doing that at all because from that five grand event, because I booked type, those type of parties, I could book probably three more from that. So for me, it is worth it to have a three hour conversation with somebody because they might then from that conversation, they might be going to, out to dinner with their friends and saying, you know what? I just got off the phone with Shaney and I really want to book her. And can I just tell you, she was so personal on the phone and I felt so good and comfortable with her. I'm probably going to book her. And the next thing you know, those people are talking to somebody and you never know what's going to happen with all of that. So for me, I just think that that is what's key to it and just that comfort level and the trust, just like John said, is what's going to get you over that bridge to just go with it. But you got to put the time into it and it's, you can't rush it. You just can't. I, I would say, I, first off, I'm not going to disagree with anything that you said there. I, I'm not because that's gold there. One thing that I would, I would encourage all of us here though, to start thinking forward because I don't, maybe you've run into it. Maybe you haven't. A lot of the clients that I'm starting to, get phone calls from, or I shouldn't say phone calls, I'm getting emails from, I'm getting messages through Wedding Wire or through The Nod or something like that, are people that are not wanting to sit down until I've gotten that conversation to a certain point. Okay. So what, what I would encourage you to do is to be able to realize that a lot of people are using the digital forms like a normal conversation that we're having back and forth. So as you're, you know, the stuff that you would say to them 
not necessarily the same stuff you'd say to them face to face, but as you're starting to establish that trust, as, start, as you're starting to get that um, feel for it, be comfortable doing it in email, be comfortable yes. in doing it in messenger, in, in Snapchat, whatever you're using to communicate back and forth, um, be comfortable doing it there because, you know, I, I kind of was in the kind of frame like, frame set of like she said where of having them in front of me i'm like i've got to have in front of me i've got to have them in front of me and then i would run into a couple and and i start the conversation also i'm like all right let's sit down and talk and then they ghosted on me and and so it was like hmm so i i took advice and i'm gonna go ahead and throw it out again alan burke um where he basically said <laughs> it was the trifecta he wanted me to get the hat trick um where he, he said, you know, kind of that same idea where this is the way they're wanting to do it now. You've got to be comfortable doing that. And I, I started doing that and I, I started having conversations and I went, first off, I don't have an office so that I didn't, I didn't have to worry about going to Starbucks that night. I didn't have to worry about going to Panera or wherever I'm meeting them at and sitting there, you know, in the crowded restaurant or, or in the coffee shop talking for multiple hours. I just had that conversation um, in my living room with my laptop. And, and we covered the same things. And I ended up booking the event. We had sit downs. Don't get me wrong. We got to that point. But in the initial setup, they needed that trust over, over digital before they were ever going to invest the time to see me face to face. And that's the thing. You have to get their trust. So you have to have that comfort level to be able to, you know, to get them there and you have to put the time into it. And, so, and sometimes it is through text messages or through emails. And like Dan said, you know, if you can't get that sit down, you have to be able to say it through the messages exactly how you would be able to say it, you know, you know, face to face, you know, be like, look, I've been in the industry this long and I can tell you that, you know, you know, if you look at my reviews or I can give you names of former clients that you could talk to and you, you know, and they have no problem giving, you know, letting you tell how their events went and, and I can tell you this and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, and you make that comfort level so they could be like, okay, you know what, they're putting the time into telling me that they want to work with me and they in their and they're prompt on their responses and they're getting back to me and it's not taking four days to respond to me you know it's okay if they take two days to respond to you but you can't take two days to respond to them so it's like you have to work that way too so you know you just got to get that comfort level and the trust from them and and you take it from there and and i'm gonna i'm gonna throw out as my wife has so eloquently said if you're a good irish person you answer a question with a question um you you want to build their trust you got to ask questions out the wazoo exactly oh, i agree with that i mean as much as i love the idea of throwing your reviews and mentioning your reviews you got to start asking eight thousand questions about them you know don't even start turning it to to you until you can find out but i'm also going to throw the mitch taylor idea hey why don't, why don't you just name drop all night long um the idea that, you know, if they're asking for price, you got to give it to them and not necessarily have to give it to them right away, try and defer them. But if they come back and ask for a price a second time, or, oh my gosh, if they ask for it for a third time, um, you're not getting their mind off of it. And if at that point, you're starting to probably annoy them. Um, so you can answer it. You know, there's a multitude of different ways that you can answer it that might keep them on the hook until you can get them to answer more. Um, if you're fearful that the price will just scare them away, but ask 8,000 questions. No. 8,000 questions. Um, I could try Ian, but could you be more specific about the 8,000 that you want? See what I mean? I turned it, I turned it around. <laughs> Jared, anything you'd throw into there? I, I you, you've been awfully quiet tonight. I apologize. No, I've been, I've been listening which is something else that I think everybody needs to learn to do significantly better. I think that uh, we all as DJs have, have a tendency of wanting to talk and wanting to say a whole bunch of things. And just like our mutual friend Mitch says, you'd have to ask questions. Um, Alan has said many times, you, you, you have to take a different approach. And it wasn't until about two years ago that I realized that how I approached a client because the the clientele that I normally work with I don't do a lot of bars I do primarily 85% is weddings and then the other 15% is corporate and holiday parties and I don't even really do school dances special events a lot of game shows stuff like that and what I when I realized that 90% of what I'm selling is me or is the service and then the 10% is everything else my brain switched 
and I, and I completely looked at what I was doing and how I was explaining it to couples completely and totally different. I, I was, it was no longer a sales approach. It was more of a conversation. And if I could strike up a conversation with them and explain to them and converse with them, it was easier to, to, to book them in all honesty. Um, now I don't hold off on my pricing. As soon as somebody asks me for my pricing, I give them my pricing. It's there. They know what it is. If they continue the conversation, then that's a, that's, that's something for me to not have to worry about anymore. If they know exactly what my pricing is and they're still wanting to talk to me, then I know that that's never going to be an issue. And if I lose the sale, then I know it's something that I did. I answered something wrong. I asked the wrong question. It was something that I did. And, um, it, it was a, it was a big eye opener for me. The, uh, the, the couples that are just, infatuated with pricing and only pricing and that's all that they're concerned about. Uh, I did something and it works for me just because I have kind of a quirky personality, but I, I reached out to the local audiovisual company and asked them for a quote for rental for the exact equipment that I use. Mm -hmm. I said, this is the exact equipment that I want to have. How much is it going to cost for you to have it set up on a specific date for a specific amount of time? They sent me back the quote. And then I went out and I reached, uh, there's like a local animal company that you can like rent animals. And I said, how much would it cost to have a monkey, a monkey come out to an event for four hours? And I took that price and then I took the price of the equipment and those two prices, that, that, that total amount costs significantly more than about 70% of the DJs here in the Indianapolis area. So when they really want to fight and push kind of Reggie, it's going back to those, those people that, you know, how do you address those people that just want to curse at you and, and just throw stuff back in your face when they want to really start to play hardball with me and say, no, it's, it's price, 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 price. I'll say, listen, if you want a trained monkey to run some equipment for you for X amount of time on X amount of date, this is how much it's going to cost to literally have a trained monkey run this equipment. Now, if you want somebody that's going to represent you at your event and, you know, have, have that impact on your guests, then this is what it's going to cost. And it costs a different amount. So again, uh, is it the right approach for you? I don't know. I would say try it. Cause, cause the reaction that I get is laughter. I, they start to break down at that point. They're like, you know what? You're, we're being a little, you're, we're being silly about this. And I'm like, but I mean, in all honesty, if all you're worried about is price, if that's all you're worried about is price, you can find other people that will do stuff cheaper than, than what I'm doing. Now, here's where you have to put it in, into equation or into perspective. Would you rather have that super cheap uh, DJ or would you rather have a trained monkey come out and interact with your guests and then some music being played in the background or would you rather have a, a higher quality event? So, uh, Kind of like I, the monkey. Yeah, I was gonna say. I'm right? just saying. I understand. I, I think it would be pretty cool, especially if you like walk I mean, around. Is the monkey like, wearing a tux? Because I kind of want to see that. Uh, the tux unfortunately costs more, and you would. I think would like to see the monkey in some tails. See, like, the monkey in the tux yeah. ends up being more than Jared per charges. So yeah. I just kind of want to see the monkey in some tails. Like I'm yeah. just saying. Monkey and some tails. That sounds not like the, not the little hat right. with the the red no, vest. No, I don't want this. I don't want this monkey. I don't want this monkey. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of want, like, want like a, you know. I, you know what? I'm very intrigued by like what, how much a trained monkey and rental uh, across the country is. I kind of want Serato monkey. I'm just saying. Don't you have some ins there? Come on. I kind of want You got ins at every company. You got you to gotta have some connections. Can you make Serato monkey happen for me? <laughs> oh. I need to agree. Yes. I kind of want Serato monkey. I think I can make that. You get some t-shirts made. I'll work on Serato. I want Serato monkey. Yeah. I think we can do this. <laughs> One, two punch. What, is that Serato monkey? <laughs> Greg, is that Serato monkey for me? <laughs> it's awesome. Well, Dan, let's wrap this up and... Oh, do we have to? Oh my goodness. <laughs> after you've got a big day tomorrow, you know, you have to get back to school. <sighs> yeah, I did teach. Uh, whatever. Do you, have um, to, do you have to go back to school tomorrow? I was in school today. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah. And let's just put it this way. Full moon, first day back from break. Kids are nuts. If you have your own kids, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, I've got about a classroom full you can have. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, by the way, I hope you guys enjoyed this tonight. I, I, I know I did. And the fact that we did not get cut off was even better. Um, but I, I really appreciate everybody who tuned in uh, tonight, whether you jumped in for five seconds or whether you jumped in for uh, the entire time. Thank you very much. You guys are really what makes DJN TV 
what it is. Tomorrow night, you get to do it again. Um, different crew, different lineup. Um, so it's not us. We're, I might try and jump in and be a spectator tomorrow night. It might be a, kind of fun to be on that side of it as well. Um, complete listings will be sent out in email form tomorrow as well as the links. So if you are wondering what show, uh, John, do you have a, a quick breakdown of, of topics you want to throw out to them? Bill Herman is going to be talking about uh, performance. He'll be handling questions related to that. We've got Jeremy Breck, who's going to be talking about lighting, and he's going to be doing a little uh, DMX uh, discussion for a few minutes. And then uh, Matt, uh, who's with us right there. Matt Peterson is going to be talking about moving from a part-time DJ to a full-time. Some of the things you need to be thinking about and such as you move from that part income to making a DJ your full-time income. So those will be our three main discussions tomorrow night. There we go. So uh, make sure you're checking all that out. And uh, if you're watching this in the past, obviously keep an eye out for those uh, links to that as well. Recorded shows. If you wanted to see some of the other ones, see what was being said. You can't ask questions, but you can see what was said. Um, you definitely want to check these out and have some fun with that. Guys, again, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for checking us all out and being a part of DJN TV. Yes, Merry New Year, everybody. All right. Good night, everybody. Merry New Year. Good night, everybody.